In this video, we'll learn how to configure and deploy a container in Proxmox virtual environment. Containers are a part of an open source project that allows users to easily virtualize a lightweight, yet isolated application appliance platform while still using a host level processing system. Proxmox uses Linux containers, or LXC, as its underlying container technology. Instead of the heavy and intensive process of emulating and virtualizing everything down to the CPU thread and RAM, no hardware needs to be emulated. Containers produce a lightweight package by only virtualizing what is necessary and sharing the Proxmox Linux kernel between all the containers and host system. Containers are often a better option when resource efficiency is a priority, though they offer less compatibility compared to VMs. Let's review how to configure and deploy a container in Proxmox. Click the Create CT button located at the top of the Proxmox interface. On the Create LXC container window, ensure the Advanced checkbox at the bottom is checked to see extra configuration options. The General tab is used for generic settings like name, ID number, and settings about login credentials such as predefined SSH keys and passwords for the root user. For this video, I'll ensure the node is set to Server 1. Next, I'm going to set the CT ID to 205 and name it to Demo CT. When creating a container is necessary to configure the root password of the container. Therefore, I'll enter the password and then again to confirm it. I'll click the Next button to continue. The Template tab is used to define the template file that Proxmox should use to create the container. Similar in how virtual machines use ISO files to install the operating system, containers use Linux templates to build the machine. They are pre-created LXC containers that we can load into Proxmox. In the Storage field, I'll ensure Proxmox points to the, the right storage area, in my case NFS-VMs. Then, we need to select the template file. To select it, we need to click the template dropdown and in my case I'll use the Ubuntu file. I'll click the Next button to continue. The Disks tab is used to create the virtual disks for the CT to use and store data on. In my case, I'll ensure NFS-VMs is selected in the storage field and leave the default size of 8GB. We are not going to modify any other setting. Notice the Add button near the bottom left corner of the container creation area. It is possible to add up to 256 additional storage systems to a Proxmox container. I'll click the Next button to continue. The CPU tab is used to configure the allocated CPU resources given to the container. Compared to the VM CPU panel, container's CPU settings are much easier to set up with less configuration. This is because, as opposed to fully virtualizing the CPU, Linux containers run their processes and CPU tasks directly on the host system's Linux kernel using a special scheduler to handle balancing the needs of CTs and the needs of the host Proxmox system. We can configure the number of cores. The CPU limit restricts the amount of CPU time allocated. This is a floating point number, so it is perfectly valid to assign two cores to a container but restrict overall CPU consumption to half a core. The last setting is the CPU units. This is a relative weight passed to the kernel scheduler. The larger the number is, the more CPU time this container gets. The number is relative to the weights of all the other running containers and the default is 100. We can use this setting to prioritize some containers. I'll leave the defaults and click on Next. The Memory tab is used to configure the RAM allocated to the container. In my case, I'll set the memory to 2 GB. The Swap field is temporary storage on your drive that allows low memory systems to use more memory than installed, primarily by offloading inactive processes. However, not all applications support Swap, so assess your needs before allocating it. I'll click the Next button to continue. The Network tab is used to configure the network connectivity of the CT. We can configure similar settings as a VM. In my case, I'll click on the bridge dropdown and set the bridge to VMBR1. 
Notice the IPv4 slash CIDR field. Unlike a VM, we need to specify the IP address during the CT creation. In my case, the IP address is 192.168.100.10 slash 24. And in the gateway IPv4 field, I'll enter my gateway which is 192.168.100.1. Finally, I'll set the rate limit to 100 megabytes per second to cap the CT's connection speed and click next to continue. The DNS tab is used to configure the DNS settings of the container. In the case that a custom DNS provider for specific containers is available, this is where we can identify it. We can also have the container use the host's DNS settings and have Proxmox automatically update the container's DNS settings as needed. We'll use this option and click Next to continue. The Confirm tab displays a summary of all parameters for us to verify. I'll click the Start after created and click Finish. The container creation will begin. A task viewer has appeared. When Proxmox identifies the CT creation as successful, the phrase Task OK will appear. I'll click the X button to close the task viewer. Once the container has been created, you can verify is functioning correctly. In the resource tree, the 205 demo CT should be listed. I'll click on it and in the content panel I'll click console. We can confirm Ubuntu has loaded and display the prompt to log into the container. I'll enter the password I configured during the CT creation. I'm now logged in as the root user in the new container. You are now ready to configure and deploy a container in Proxmox virtual environment. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.